everyone, Gerard Scarpacey here, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. We're coming to you live from the soft opening of the Cutler, Times Arlo Salon in Soho, New York City. We're here with the co-owner of this fabulous new salon, Jenny Balding. Uh, we're going to get to know her, hear her story, and of course we're going to learn this beautiful haircut on her model and client, Grace. Uh, Jenny's obviously started out already, and Jenny, why don't you show with the audience what you're going to be teaching today? Yes, so Grace's hair was originally in quite a heavy bulk up, um, which was fantastic, but we're going to take it to something different. We're really going to take in the sides and the back really, really tight and keep that top heavy and quite a kind of 90s kind of feel. Um, so right now, we're starting just to scissor over comb all through the temple area in the C-shaped section, right down into the nape. I'm going to take that in really tight and then building up into weight. So when you say 90s, right away it made me think like Linda Evangelista, that yeah. kind of... Uh, totally, absolutely. Yeah. It's like kind of more of like that 90s supermodel Linda Evangelista. I guess like the and Bees that did a lot of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. oh, it's phenomenal. Yeah, if you guys aren't familiar, it's kind of an iconic hairdresser. It's still a lot. Still working with Julian Dees, and he had kind of made that supermodel a bowl cut from the 90s, and I think that's going to be gorgeous. So, any tips here? We noticed that you started off with scissor over comb, which can be a difficult technique for a lot of people. First off, why not just use a clipper and blast it off? People always ask that. And any tips in particular with the actual technique? Okay, well, for me personally, I love doing scissor over comb because I'm old school and I just love the velvety finish of using scissors over comb because I always finish it off with the texturizing blades, which gives it a very much tailored and velvety finish, uh, which I feel you just don't get with clippers. Uh, and I really want to tailor make it to the shape of the head so precisely. Again, I love clippers, but for this instance, I really want to give a soft finish, even though it's going to be a very strong look, I want it to have a soft feel throughout. So two, two good reasons there. The actual finish of the texture you feel is more velvety. Yes. Do you feel that's maybe a bit more feminine since you have a short hair front of a woman, you want to do everything you can usually to bring out that femininity? Yeah, because I want it to be really strong, but I always want to have some flow, some movement and keep it completely seamless. Uh, so that really gives it a softer feel, even though it's a very strong look. And then secondly, you said you can kind of work with the head shape. I noticed your hand and your fingers. Kelly, can we get a close shot of how Jenny holds the comb? Because, you know, I, I think this is, makes a huge difference. Some people scissor over comb, they just kind of monkey paw it. Where you've got this, like, little wrist action and you're kind of C-shaping. Can you show that and explain that, the benefit? Yeah, I'm really working up the nape exactly how Grace's head shape is. So I'm not just going over it like a one foot all like really tailor-making that to all the bumps in our head, not many, don't worry. <laughs> We're really working with that shape there. So important, just elevating that out through there. Yeah, you've got this beautiful kind of C shaping, so obviously this is making a very graduated effect. Yes, So absolutely. from a very petered out hairline and then building up weight into the top. Yes, absolutely. I also noticed you chose a white comb, was that deliberate? Yes, because our hair is black, very dark, then I definitely want to use a white comb so I can see literally every single hair that I'm working with. And Bobby Smith, that is a Lame Dore Pro Comb, which is a beautiful nylon based comb. We have those available at Hairbrain Pro, which is a site where we sell tools. So if you if you like that philosophy, it's also a longer comb. Do you find any yeah. benefit to that? I love a longer comb because I really just feel like it can work easier and just spread it out a lot more. I bought it from you, actually. Thank you. And then Ellen uh, Mullen Muti, who's a, a frequent watcher, is asking, do the larger scissors also help when you do this type of work? I find it. It's a personal thing. You know, everyone's got different hand sizes. Um, so I can't say, oh, yes, you should definitely use five and a half. So that might not work for another person's hand. So um, lots of love coming in already. Martin Millen says you're an elegant hair cutter, oh. which I noticed right away. And you're, you're very physical. I can see the way that you kind of move. If Kelly, maybe at some point you get a shot back because you cut hair with your whole body, not just your fingertips. Yes. And I can see the way that you're moving and standing and where you're positioning your head, super important. So lots of love coming in for that. Guys, if you have any questions for Jenny, this is Jenny Balding. She's the co-owner here of Cutler Times Arlo here in Tribeca, New York. It's a brand new salon. It's actually just done the soft opening. Um, still a few little details here, but you can see it's a beautiful clean space right here downtown Soho. There's a cut, the cut, the flagship salon is about you know, half a mile away from here. And this is a nice little outpost. Um, so Jenny, what was the idea here in partnering with the Arlo Hotel and opening another salon? 
Well, this is just an extension of whatever, uh, what is an already amazing brand. I've been with Cutler for 16 years when we had one salon and, and helped with many others to develop the brand into what it is today. So this was like a natural next step. The Arlo Soho Hotel is a very creative brand. And between them and us together, we can do some really good events and... It's, it's kind of an intimate space. And, yes. You know, I was talking with Rodney about this a few weeks ago about, you know, because the other space is, is quite large, the flagship, and there's dozens of chairs. We're here, it's just like an eight or ten chair location. Eight, eight chairs, yeah. And so we, was that a, obviously a definite thing? We wanted to have a more intimate space? Absolutely. We didn't want it to be too small, but definitely, we, you know, we've got the huge one at Soho, we've got the medium-sized one in Brooklyn, uh, and this was like just perfect. Eight chairs and with the high ceilings and all the natural light coming in, that was a big draw. A uh, question coming in from Dawn Bodie. She wants to know where your accent is from. Uh, Which I guess is where, where are you from? I'm from Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, I've been in New York. What's the proper term? Glaswegian? Is that? Uh, Glaswegian. Glaswegian. Well, Ouija. If you're going to be a Ouija you're if you're in Glasgow. Awesome. So again, lots of love coming in. We've got Ziada watching from Serbia. Is there anyone watching from Scotland? Give us a shout out. We'd really love to know where you guys are watching from. And I also wanted to uh, get a second to introduce you guys to Grace, Jenny's fabulous model with this beautiful short hair, beautiful face. Have you been wearing short hair for a while? For a bit, yes. You were telling the story before that it got a little bit over-processed and you guys yep. buzzed it off? I shaved it off. Now we're in the process of trying to grow it out gracefully. And has that been fun? It's, it's been challenging, yeah. but you know, I have Jenny who's amazing, so she always like keeps me looking cool. So, Jenny's your regular stylist, and uh, she gave you a shout out and said, Hey, can you be my model? Yes, awesome. All right, Jenny, looks like you're moving to the second side. So, this is for those at home who maybe, who maybe missed um, what you're doing over there, we can get a good recap. Yeah, so what I'm doing, you can see how heavy it is over the ear, it's very blunt. So, I want to remove all that weight so it's actually really shaped around the ear. Again, working in a C-shaped section right down to the nape and then work building up to the weight because I want to keep that top uh, area really quite heavy. So some love coming in for your, for your boots, Jenny, from Marina uh -huh. Lantos, our good friend in New Jersey. Shout out to George Roundy, who, that's a pseudonym for a good friend of ours. Um, Again, that question, and you can never kind of explain this too much because people are always wondering why scissor over comb versus clipper? What's the benefits here? For me personally, I love scissor over comb because it really, really tailor makes it to the shape of the head. And also I use the texturizing blades to finish afterwards, which gives it a velvety finish. So the grow out is a lot softer. Um, uh, and I just feel like for this look, I want it very strong, but yet soft with a feminine touch. Again, lots of love coming in. You're very welcome, Susan Silver, for this Sunday treat. Um, we are in, it, it's kind of a soft opening here of a brand new Cutler salon. It's called Cutler Times Arlo. It's part of the Arlo Hotel here in Soho. And Jenny, who's worked with Robbie and the Cutler brand for 16 years, uh, is, is the partner here. So is this your first time kind of in the ownership realm? Very much so. Are you ready for the toughest job ever in the industry? Yeah, uh, exactly. It's just, a, it's just a natural next step for me because I've worked with Rodney for so long. Uh, it was just a natural next step and so far loving every minute. <laughs> what, I'm gonna, Kelly, do we need to reposition a chair? I think so, yeah, but just a little bit tight there. If you don't mind, Jenny, we'll just turn maybe sure. a little bit this way. Sure, let's give sure it a whirl. everyone at home can get a great shot of this beautiful, elegant scissor over comb. Um, someone said you sound like you're from Edinburgh which is a more posh accent, they said. Uh, well, I think because I've lived, um, my accent is a lot softer, but I yeah. think that's a lot to do with, I've been here since 2003. So I naturally subconsciously soften my accent so people don't have to go, what, every two minutes. So, uh, but maybe uh, when you get around, same with me being from Brooklyn, when I get around a bunch of Brooklynites and maybe there's an alcoholic beverage involved. If you give me a couple of drinks, it's going to get pretty strong. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Just have a couple of drinks and uh, we'll be on. full on Glaswegian. Well, lots of love for scissor over comb. We know, guys, it's such an important technique. Um, for so many things, and obviously you can use clippers for a lot of things, but those subtle differences of getting that velvety finish, and I think really being able to manipulate the head shape a lot. But you do work with clipper from time to time. Yeah, absolutely, but for this I just felt very strongly that this was a good finish, and particularly with uh, Grace's hair, it's already a very strong hair type, 
So I really want to soften those ends. I don't want it to feel too jaggedy or too yeah. raw looking. So it makes maybe a little less poppy on such strong, because when yes. you cut so mechanically with the clipper, it makes the ends so clean that yeah. they can kind of pop. And that's out. good for very fine hair, but Grace's hair is very thick, so I definitely want that velvety finish. Great question coming in from Ashley Waddell about working around the ears. Any mm -hmm. tips for working? Obviously, you can maybe you can feel like it's a little dangerous with scissor over comb. Anything you do to keep it safe? For example, what I'm doing right now, I just bend the ear over, then pop the comb in, and then that way you're not getting in the way. So yeah, that's so a great little bend, one. Let's I'll make sure Kelly can over. see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. And then that way you can go in and there's gonna be no injuries. That's a great way to say. <laughs> we'll be happy to hear Grace. <laughs> Genius, Ashley loved it. Thanks for that great question. Guys, if you're watching at home, we love questions. Jenny's a great educator. She's been a hairdresser for, for a minute, I imagine. She's been here in New York working with Cutler for 16 years. What about before that? Where Did you start off in Scotland? Yes, I started off in Glasgow. I worked for Rita Rusk. Oh, I knew it. Oh, awesome. How awesome. Rita Rusk from when I was... A legend. Yeah. Started there, trained there, was art director there, and then, you know, loved every minute of it. But New York was something that had been calling me for many years. So, so uh, uh, within the rust methodology, especially in those days, there were lots of different blades that you guys worked Yes. With. Actually, when I started my career, the first training I had was rust training. Oh, wow. Like Alpha, the Omega, yes. Theta, and all these great videos with Irvine and Rita. Yeah. The, the Beyond the Fringe technique, rolling the hair. Oh, my God, yeah. you're bringing back memories. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she designed them, and they were phenomenal. When she brought that out, it was absolutely amazing. But like anything, time moves on. We've all learned techniques of how to texturize in slightly different manners. But in, the, in those days, it was like amazing because everything was so strong and sassoon based. So to then suddenly have these strong looks, but a lot of movement within, that stayed with me always, you know? I think, you know, it's, it, it's so beautiful to study all the different methodologies and then kind of come up with your own. That's how yeah. I've been so fortunate that I started and I had those rust videos, then I got into sassoon, then I got into razor cutting and bumble. And it just really helps you to become so, individualized. And what, so what's your philosophy at Cutler with training staff? How do you guys, you know, when someone comes in, and if anyone at home, we get questions all the time, hey, I'd love to move to New York. If someone wanted to come to New York and work at, you know, one of the most prestigious salons in town, what would that be like for them? Well, at Cutler, our education is really, really important to us. And you'll have your foundational training. As time goes on, when you do something, you get into the classes which are a bit more advanced, then it's going to be more about teaching different techniques so then you can come up with your own. It's not like you must do it this way and this is the only way. We really like for everybody to express their own individual. But obviously, there's a thing, you know, you need to know the key foundations. But razor cutting is a huge thing for us as well. Again, uh, we did have a question about, you know, how you're using the head shape to build this up. Like, I, you, when I look, I see the way the spine of the comb is really kind of, you come in and you see shape and ride it out. If you yeah. can explain that, lots of people are loving the shape and would love to, you know, understand how you're creating it. Well, and also I stand at the side a little bit because I really want to keep checking all the time how this is working with her, the back of her head here. So I'm really, I keep checking each time and then going in. Really tight the neck and then just and bring it up. As you do that, you know, not to overly simplify it, but you're kind of looking for more of a 45 degree angle of weight being built. Absolutely, because. The graduation. Absolutely, because there's quite a lot of layering through the top, and I want to give the impression that it's actually more one length. So by building this off, it's going to give more of a one length feel on uh, the top area. So even within scissor over comb, you could cut flatter than this if you held oh, your comb yeah. in a different way. Absolutely, I'm really ele elevating that out because I want to build up into weight that isn't necessarily there just now, but it will be by the end. So. Okay, I'm gonna move just a little bit here so we can get that angle, great. Guys, if you're watching from home, we'd love your questions. Uh, again, that, the question about clippers, Jenny loves clippers, but in this case, she wanted a more velvety texture, which makes sense on this really kind of pokey Asian hair. Um, and she felt the scissor would give a softer texture. And then you mentioned you're gonna go back in with a texturizing shear to kind of refine it. Absolutely, once I've finished here, I'm gonna take the neck trimmers, bring this in, make it a bit tidier, make sure it's faded out, and then finish the whole of the scissor of a comb with texturizing blades to give it that absolute velvet finish, which I think is just, it looks phenomenal on this kind of hair texture. And then we'll get into all that hair on top and really shape it. Absolutely. Because so, there are lots of questions about how you work with, you know, challenging hair, Asian hair, thick hair. So we'll be able to talk about that when we move up into the top as well. 
Guys, if you're just joining us, I'm Gerard Scarpacy. I'm the co-founder of the Hairbrain community. Our whole community is founded on the concept of education and sharing education. Uh, we use these Facebook Lives multiple times a week to connect with great hairdressers. Today we're at Cutler Times Arlo, which is a brand new salon in Soho, Tribeca here in New York City. It's attached to the Arlo Salon. Uh, Jenny Balding, a longtime stylist and, and leader at Cutler Salon in, in Soho, partnered here. This is her first salon. How does yeah. that feel? Exciting? Feels really it's yeah. exciting now it's open. We're three days in and three you know, days in. We're I love very that amazing. new salon smell. Absolutely, and we've been jam-packed. All our clients are loving it and have moved over and yeah, it's a real, it's a real lovely thing. Okay, so we can see you've changed combs. Yep. Uh, can you tell us why? It looks like it's a Wyatt's Park barbering comb. Yes. Also available at Hairbrain Pro. Yeah. Tell us why you switched to a different comb. So I really want to get this hairline in very tight, and I love the flexibility of this comb. It's so bendy, which I feel like is imperative when you're going through this back area. I do not want a stiff comb. I want it very bendy, so I can really maneuver around the shape of the nape. So it allows you to get closer and work Really, with as close as I like. You know, yeah. I could really take that right off if I wanted to, but I just want to, again, build up. I'm just really refining this nape area. One of my great friends and mentors is watching, Mr. Kurt Kiefner. Kurt Kiefner is uh, kind of a very famous barber who's really helped teach thousands of people. So I, I know he approves of your technique. Oh, good. And he'll Thank be really you. really happy to see your C-shaping. Tell if we can show Jenny's hand how she holds the comb. It's, uh, he had a mission for years to try to teach as many hairdressers as possible who kind of do the monkey paw. See, you know, I thought everybody did C shape, so this no, is news they really to me. Don't. They really I just presume. So lots of people, they just kind of hold it like, like this. I don't understand. As opposed to that, you know? <laughs> ah, right, 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 yes. Yeah. That little, you can't get a fingertip rotation. Yeah, because so I'm getting, really bending yeah, in. You know. And the little move of your fingertips rather than your whole arm. So, you know, it's the subtle things that make a haircut great. Yeah, Kurt says brilliant. I knew he would love that. I feel very honored. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, just a general question from Jenna Lauren. What kind of hair types do you recommend for scissor over comb? Are there any hair types you don't like scissor over comb on? No. Uh, I mean, really, anything you adapt to each texture. Yeah. Uh, whether you go in tighter, softer, texturize more, less. I would, no, I think any, any, any texture can work, you've just got to tailor it to that texture, precisely. Do you find sometimes uh, very fine blonde hair on pale skin can be challenging? It's kind of... For sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm 20 years in, yeah. but, and I feel like nothing really, you know, but, but yes, it's challenging, you just have to be extra concentrating. <laughs> uh, lots of comments about how attractive you are as well, Jenny. Could, My goodness. Say you're, you're beautiful. Thank you. It doesn't hurt that's in so the beauty nice. business to be beautiful. Oh, beautiful nice. model, beautiful hairdresser, and then there's me. <laughs> how do I fit in is the question, right? Right, so I'm just going to use my net Okay, so why at this stage do you feel like it's time to kind of switch into there? Because I've really taken it as tight as I want to through the nape. Now I really want to just take this excess hair off and then I'll fine tune it again with a barber comb. We did have some questions about what type of scissor you're using. I think that looks the like Hukari. a Hakari. Hakari? Yeah, Hakari always love mine. Yeah, beautiful scissors, Hakari's. Is that that's your favorite? So Stacy B. B. Williams is asking about your new salon. Is it fully staffed yet? Uh, yes, but you know, we're always open to, um, you know, want to give anybody an opportunity really, you know, but we've never seen no, so you can get in contact for sure. So anybody out there that's interested in working in, in New York Salon, um, the flagship is Cutler in Soho, Rodney Cutler Salon, and there's a couple of others around New York. Um, and now this is a brand new location where Rodney has partnered with Jenny Baldy, one of his longtime stylists, to open this cool, intimate space, about a 10 chair space in the Arlo Hotel here in Soho, Tribeca. If anyone's interested in contacting you, can, can they do it on Instagram or Facebook? Absolutely. Give a shout out of where they can send you a message. Absolutely, because you know what? Things change as in on the owner's business. Things change all the time. So you always want to you know, open the door to people. Well, Andrew Chung, who says that you are so attractive, also he did say that I was handsome. And oh he says hello, goodness. hello from North Korea. Is it North Korea? No. Yeah, North Korea. Yes, thank you very much. I didn't even know I'll we just were. Keep it, I'll keep my head down to the Yes, I didn't know we were able to be watching North Korea. I guess things are changing. So that's fantastic. Lots of love coming in. Tons of viewers. If you're just joining us, we're here with Jenny Baldy. This is her beautiful model, Grace. 
working on? How did you, you know, why did you choose to do the whole thing dry? I love cut and scissor. I look them dry because I really feel I can see exactly how the hair is moving. I feel like when it's really wet, I mean maybe when it's even damp as well, but if it's wet, I really feel like you can't see the movement of the hair. I want to see immediately how the hair is reacting so I can adapt at any second. And um, especially with scissor over comb when it's wet and it kind of sticks together, sometimes I find it gets shorter than I want. Like Absolutely. Really this will give it the true finish that I want immediately. Here's a great question from uh, Lara Harris. How do you choose the type of neckline that you want to create um, in a shape like this? I always want to follow what the natural hairline is doing and also how it comes down into her nape area there. Good shot then. Like I can see exactly how it, the way it works here is perfect. So I just want to fine tune that so it's mimicking what it wants to do naturally. So in this case, just tapering or petering out and rather than saying I'm gonna square it off or round it off. Yeah, I will never square or yeah. round off anything. I will always go with a natural finish just cause that's my my preferred way. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a taste level kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, do you find sometimes you have to explain that? You may be with uh, male clients who are used to saying, can you square it off or round it off? Or yeah, and I think they're always pleasantly surprised when they see the finish. They're like, oh my God, that looks really good and natural. And I was like, yeah, because you don't want it to look like a haircut on your head. You want it to enhance you and, and work with your hair texture and not to be look wiggy. And, you know, when I was first learning it, the way it was explained to me as well is that it'll grow in better. Like if you Absolutely. put something artificial in, it looks good for a day. Yeah. And then the next day you've got stubble growing all around it. If you just taper it all the way out into the skin, then that hair over the next 30 days will grow in consistency. Absolutely. Lots of love. Yeah, Josephine Toms is asking about texturizing shears. Just about to use them. Yep. It's perfect timing. Yeah, she asked if you if you use them and when you use them. So perfect timing. Jenny has been getting in the shape and refining this beautiful shape. Let's get a quick look at that before we move into texturizing shears. So a nice, beautiful, graduated shape. Just peed it out on the edge, say hi Grace, so everybody else see it hat. And now switch into the texturizing scissor or shear, whatever your preferred term is. Yes, so I'm gonna use a texturizing shear here. Again, I'm gonna start off at the sides, work in the C-shaped section, right down to the nape on both sides, and then work the V up and up to the back area. Do you ever just start off with the texturizing scissor or shear? Yeah, if the hair was fine enough. Yeah. Quite possibly I've done full haircuts with just a texturizing shear. But I knew that I had to take so much weight out first to really get the foundation in, and then I can finesse for the texturizing yeah, For shape. me, sometimes with that fine blonde hair that's yeah. kind of skin colored, yeah. it's like a little, it's almost like a safety valve, because you it go totally over is. It three or four times, because if you go once and it's like too short, yeah. Or, yeah, too hollow. And then you just run away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really just finessing this and removing weight at the same time, but really softly. Okay, so this particular texturizing scissor that you chose, tell us a little bit, is that like a 40 tooth? It looks like lots of fine teeth. Yeah. It's the only one that I use and I just use it in different ways. Um, I love that it's so close together, the teeth, and then the ridges on the top slightly, because this gives it a real velvety finish. But then I'll use this as slicing as well to create bigger, larger strokes if necessary. But right now I want it to be really, really tight in and just finesse So you don't work with the Alpha and the Omega and all that anymore? You just kind Not of anymore, because yeah. I feel like there's other ways now, but yeah. you know, 20 years ago I did, and that was yeah. amazing, you know? So it looks like a, like a, like a high volume of teeth, probably 40. Yes, And that's just yes. a great way to kind of get this velvety finish in the hair. Also, guys, if you have any questions for Jenny, she's probably getting pretty close to finishing up the undercut, the scissor over comb here. Then we're going to move into the top of Grace's haircut, which is something good and exciting. We are in a, an actual salon here. It's um, They've been open now for three days. Three days. So kind of a soft opening. Still some detail work that's going to happen here. You guys going to have a big grand opening party at some point? Yes, we certainly are. We'll have to oh, crash before it. Before Christmas, before the end of the year's on holidays. Awesome. Well, please invite us. We'd love to yes. attend. You're coming through kind of on a different angle. Is that deliberate? Almost coming like in cross and also, yes, I'm just coming in for the scissor of a comb part, but then noticing it's still quite heavy in here, which I want to just loosen up just a little bit more. And it seems like you're going a little bit deeper, like a little to the bit deeper, shaft. yeah. So it wasn't just about the ends there. Yeah, no, no, no. Going in just a little bit deeper in this area here because this was so heavy to begin with. Lots of love for your work, Jenny. I had nothing but Thank beautiful you. comments about how graceful you work and just beautiful work. And again, I think, you know, a trained eye can, can see in scissor over comb everything. 
Like, you know, I, I, at certain times when I've worked as an education director in different salons, when someone would come in who's already experienced and say, hey, I don't need any more training, I'm ready to go on the floor, usually the first thing I would say is, okay, well, let's see a really tight scissor hoop comb. Because if yeah. somebody has that, if you can nail that, then yeah. you're right. Do you agree? Like so, absolutely. If you can nail scissors with a comb beautifully, then I know that you've really got the balance. You've got control, and you've got hands, and yeah, I agree. Because some people think, oh, it's just, I was at a conference the other day, and there was a male speaker on stage, just a beauty industry conference, but it wasn't for hairdressers. And he had a short haircut, and he stood up there and said, My haircut only takes 10 minutes. You couldn't even spend more than 10 minutes on my haircut. And I almost cringed. Because I was like, actually, a great hairdresser could spend probably 30 minutes on just the underneath of yeah. the um, And it made me you know, wonder if he's ever had that experience. I think a lot of people haven't. But the difference between good and great, yeah. or bad and good, yeah. it's a big deal. All right, we're pretty much coming to the end of Scissor and Coming. I'm going to work through the top in a second. I can really see that shape is built now. Beautiful, and again, you know, not a wasted movement in anything that you did here. Um, obviously, you're still very busy behind the chair, and oh, I can yes. see that your economy of movement and motion here to get things right, like you didn't waste it. Sometimes, you know, people with scissors over comb, they kind of dabble in places, and they jump around, and uh, here, every stroke was purposeful, love that. Yeah, it's very much a method that I always followed, working from the temple down to the mate, into a V and then working right up to remove that weight. So you start always on the temples? Always on the temples, the yeah. Why, why are you starting on the temples? Because I feel like this is where you're going to create where you really want to balance. Like for example, Grace's hair, I wanted to see where I was going to have this heavy weight. You know, if this all was already perfect, I might have started at the back. But nine times out of ten, I'm always at the temple to create the guide. Yeah. And the same on the other side and then work into that V. Then you've got the perfect guideline to take it right up. Beautiful, great tip there, awesome. So starting in the temple, getting the shape in. Now it looks like you switch back to just a regular shear or scissor. Just finessing just these little areas right around here. Beautiful. And again, just petering out on the, on the side burn area, right out into the skin. So I'm gonna work through the top now. Okay, so everyone at home, this is the part you've been waiting for. We've got this beautiful scissor over common. Jenny Balding, uh, the co-owner here of Cutler, Times Arlo. A brand new salon in Tribeca, moving into the top. So if you guys have questions about uh, hair texture, density, ways of working with it, this is a great time to ask. Uh, Jenny, what are you gonna be sharing on the top here? Well, I'm just looking to see now what we have left, because there's a lot of layers in here. I want to give the impression that it's more one length. So to do that, I'm gonna strengthen actually through the fringe area, or for American people, the bang area. Uh, and then just round the ears here, I'm going to just tailor it a little bit more around the ear. I love that we have that undercut over here, because then this can just drop down, but still have a sense of strength through that area as well. Now, Grace, you had buzzed your hair a while ago and you've been growing it out. Do you find getting these undercuts and kind of letting the top grow in is help? Yes. Is, is working for you? Yes. So I don't get like a ugly mullet. Right, right. Because <laughs> the bottom, you know, it takes a while for that top to grow and the bottom yes. can get longer. Yeah. I'll never nope. let you have a mullet, Grace. Not unless you want one. Unless you want one. Mullets are great. Cool mullets. mullets. Are great. <laughs> Not bashing. My shags are in right now. A lot of love coming in still just for the beautiful technique and everyone learning so much and just so thankful for this Sunday education. So coming into the fringe, bang, pony, bangaroonies. The fringe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just strengthening this off. It was just a little too textured for me for this look. So although I want it blunt, I want it a soft blunt. So I'm just gently point cutting through that area. And why choose point cutting? Because I don't want it, I want to keep it a soft blunt. I don't want to cut it straight across because it's too harsh for her. It's not too harsh for her. I just choose that I don't want it straight across. I want to still have flow and movement throughout the haircut, even though it's going to be very strong. Any tips on point cutting? I know sometimes people are afraid they will cut themselves. And any tips on the angle of the scissor or anything at all about point cutting? Usually with point cutting, just go in, just coming in at an angle very, very slightly. You know, it's kind of, again, it's different with all kind of hair textures. I'm sometimes coming in more at an angle, sometimes straight across. It just depends. For this, I'm coming in more straight on to keep it a little bit more on the blunt side. But I definitely want that soft, blunt feel. Lane Clements loves the term soft, blunt. That's a good one. I feel like it just says it all, really. Yeah. I mean, it's in a nutshell. It's like, 
Because you're still pointing pretty closely together, so yep. it's not like you're chunking it out no. or chopping it in any way. And you know, the idea of the line, does it have to be kind of brought forward a little bit square so that it falls back? Like what's your No, I'm trying to keep it as close to her face as possible. So very little elevation? Mm, yes. Because like I said, I do want it to have a blunt feel, but I want it to have a softness to it. And again, after you finish with the outline there, uh, you'll be working internally or you're just going to work around the perimeter? I'm going to work around the perimeter, like right around here at the sides here. I love how it's kind of coming down, but I want to just, again, square off a little bit, but in a soft way. Let's get some of that hair off Grace's face. Yeah, space. you're very good at no. it. <laughs> I'm a good assistant. Yes. So again, it comes down in a point here which totally works as well, but I want it to be a little bit more square, but again, in a soft, blunt manner. So changing a little bit over the sideburn area? Yeah, because I want to show that undercut a little bit, because I think that's really gives it the finished look also. So guys at home, if you have any questions for, uh, for Jenny, we'd love to hear them. She's really sharing a lot today with this kind of technique. Now, you had mentioned earlier, it's kind of like a 90s supermodel. Like, visualize, uh, explain for us what, what you're seeing there. Well, you know, I'm seeing a lot of this happening. There's so much 90s coming back in fashion and in hair. And especially Linda Evangelista was notoriously known for having these different kind of looks. But she did always kind of versions there's more hair color that changed. She always had this top heavy kind of crop idea. So I just want to make it a bit more of like a 2018 version, um, adding things like undercutting a little deeper and taking, removing enough weight out, but still keeping that strength. I can remember that they, they called it like a Beatles cut. I remember yeah. I think it was Julian Dees, I think, yep. who had cut her hair off first. And you know, there was actually a group photo where they had like black men in suits. It was her, and I think it was like the only Campbell. Yeah, I remember. All in yeah, one yeah. image with black suits and bowl cuts, and it was like the Beatles cut. Um, and it's just something that keeps coming back. It does, yeah. and it's. I think it's really, really sexy, actually. If it's done in a certain way, it doesn't have to be harsh and masculine looking. That's why all these little touches, I think, look so beautiful. I mean, Grace is stunning as it is. And her neck and her head shape, I just think is amazing. It suits us so well. So it's like little touches like that with the scissor of the combing peeking through the undercut, you know. You know, one of the words that I always liked, you know, was kind of like fierce or brave. And it shows that, you know, women can have strength and softness at the same time. Absolutely. And let's be honest, it's kind of a perfect time for that in yep. what's happening in our world. So hopefully we'll see lots more wonderful short hair coming back into trend for women. We've seen, obviously there's different things for everyone, but we've got really long, kind of curled uh, mermaid hair, which is beautiful for a while. I've seen in the last two years, nearly every day, I'm doing a few major changes. So many of my clients have just wanted to chop their hair with it since I've all been long. Uh, it's very noticeable what's going on in the world in the last year and a half. That's great for professional hairdressers, yeah. because as much as we love long hair, when women start to cut their hair shorter, things they visit more often. Yeah. Even their color, they change their color more often. So, you know, for our business, uh, it's, it's really a big thing if the trend goes towards shorter hair just to uh, help us make more money and grow our businesses. So hopefully we'll see that. And also I feel like it really is amazing to see people's personality change when you're really you do something different with them, they become more confident, yeah. and they're like, oh, this it's is what that I need. fierceness, that braveness, that kind of heroic, uh, heroic spirit. And it gets noticed. It's going to get noticed if, if you cut your hair off. People are going to notice it. And that's half the battle today. It's, with so many things distracting it, it can be hard to get noticed. But I'm sure when you shaved your head, everybody noticed, huh? Yeah. So I'm just going to texturize through the top a little bit, and then we're almost finished. Yeah, guys, so we're actually in a live working salon, so you're hearing a blow dryer in the background. Uh, we wanted to, you know, Jenny invited us to be guests here in our brand new salon, which is in the Tribeca Soho area. It's called Cutler Times Arlo. Um, so, you know, normally we work in a studio and it's real quiet and everything, but sometimes we go out in, in the natural habitat of hairdressers. So, you know, we apologize for the blow drying, but the lesson is great nonetheless. So what, what's happening here on the top? So even though I want to keep this strength through the fringe area, 
It was already very layered on top, but it felt a bit too chunky. So I wanted to give it a seamless feel. So I just went through with my texturizing blades, this is what I was saying earlier, and just creating deep Vs. And this way, it's just gonna keep it really seamless. So you don't think that there's any layering and it gives the appearance of one length, but it moves beautifully as well. Yeah, a little, it's kind of creating these invisible or ghosted layers. Absolutely. And we use that term invisible layers for a long time. And then I saw uh, Ramon Garcia, who's a beautiful hairdresser, use the term ghost layers. And I, I love saw, that. Yeah, finally. I love it. I, I can use another term because I've been seeing invisible layers since the 90s. I yeah. Think. yeah. I mean, I just want everything that I do, I want it always to look effortless and seamless, even if it's really, really strong look. So this is why I love um, working in this way when I'm texturizing. Right. Do you think a new hairdresser who's maybe right out of cosmetology school should learn a technique like this, or do you still prefer them to learn first how to cut kind of clean, strong lines before doing something I like that? I think you've got to always have a foundation in. Once you know how to control strong lines, then you can know how to destroy it almost or break it down. Yeah. If you don't know that, I've noticed before with some people, they go immediately into breaking it down and they're really not well versed on how to do foundational hair cutting. Yeah. So how are you ever going to keep that consistency with your client if you can't repeat the same look in two months time? Or six, you know? Yeah. It's all very good, like absolutely completely breaking it, but then it's like you could be able to have a well, I'm glad to hear that you know you still feel that way because obviously uh, you've got a lot of experience and trained a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, I think sometimes people say, well, why can't I just learn the the hack, so to speak? You it's know? like anything in life, you know. You just don't learn about the icing on the cake. You've got to know how to uh, really put yeah. the cake the foundation. I don't know why that comes to my head. That's a good one. I don't but, know. You know, it's like. That, that's like the finale, doing all the text, rising and breaking it down. You've got to have a strong foundation to be able to break it down. Excellent. You know? So guys, thank you so much. Uh, I, I feel like you're probably getting close to the finish now. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, maybe finish. kind of like what, this is a question that I always ask, especially with a haircut that's not just connect A to B. Yeah. How do you know what you're doing? When you do something like this, this is exactly the vision I had. Yeah, so, so you had a vision and it matches yeah. your vision? Yeah, I wanted this all to be tight and undercut underneath. And I wanted to create a heavier, almost one length feel on top that still had a seamless, effortless flow throughout. And yes, we are very much finished. You know, in a lot of ways, when I look at it, Grace, it looks like it's, it's actually longer. I know that sounds strange, but, you know, when this was here and that was there, it didn't feel like you could see the length. Now I can feel the length on the top, so you're getting closer to growing your hair out. Yeah. So it was a great lesson from Jenny. Grace uh, had, had shaved about a year ago, and she's been slowly growing it out and, and hoping to keep it look fantastic. And I think you can all see how wonderful it looks. Are you doing any more cutting? Or can we take no, we're done. Off? we're done. Let's get the cape off here so we can see the beautiful finale. Let's get some hair up your collar there. Make sure your comfort of the coin is important. We'll just put the hair finishing for a minute. We'll take that off and see the big picture. And uh, why don't you kind of take it away for us? Tell us any final thoughts. So what I'm going to do is just use a styling cream. And my favorite one is Fat Boy Boston. It's amazing. It's just enough to kind of give it some Good texture and give it a little bit of a lift and feel. That's all very sweet. That's your body Tyson slime. That is a very good friend of mine yeah, as well. Yeah, but I do love the I can't it say it's amazing yeah. unless it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so a little bit of that will just give it a bit more of a lift and look because it's quite soft right now, which I think is also really cool. But I really want to give it a little bit more um, lift and feel. Just so now. it's really expanded the products. I can remember when it was just maybe one. Yeah, the pot. putty. Yeah. I, I haven't seen this um, this cream. Yeah, there's the putty. There's the pomade. There's a styling cream and shampoo and conditioner, and then the spray putty is phenomenal as well. I'll get one more shot there because people always want to know what you're using product wise. Fat Boy Styling Cream. Yeah, and you can see this just really separates out a little bit, but just, I just want it enough, you know, just to look as if she's kind of slept in it a wee bit. Beautiful. Let's get that 360 here so everyone at home can see. It smells great too. Yeah. Super clean. <laughs> Beautiful detail work around the edges with the scissor over comb, the soft blunt line around the front, and then that kind of textured freeform layering on the top. Come back over here, Jenny. I want to thank you for sharing with our community. Thank you. Congratulations on your beautiful new salon. Now we'll be seeing a lot more of it. And thank you, Grace, for being such a beautiful model. Cool hair. 
Peace out, guys. We're going to be coming back again live later tonight. Today's a twofer on a rainy Sunday. Tonight we'll be with our buddy Jay Mahmood doing some more hair cutting. I think it's uh, going to be after 7 p.m. East Coast time. So if you want a nighttime lesson, we'll see you later. Thanks, Jenny. Thank Any you. final words? Thank you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the comments and questions. Awesome. Peace out, guys.